Welcome to uh, Introduction to 3D Modeling using 1-2-3D Design put out by Autodesk. Uh, this class is brought to you by Library 21C of Pikes Peak Library District uh, in Colorado Springs where we have spent nearly a year and a half providing uh, 3D printing and makerspace services to our community. We're going to start uh, by reviewing the workspace that we're looking at here. Um, because for those of you who are used to, you know, other software, you're probably used to seeing a lot of words coming, you know, around here on, on the top of this menu. You're used to seeing things like file and edit and view and, and format and, you know, big drop-down boxes full of little words. And, um, you know, thankfully, 1-2-3-D uh, design uh, doesn't have those long lists of, of menus. Uh, but on the other hand, um, it's not immediately, you know, intuitive what all these little icons uh, mean uh, and we'll be covering them in in the subsequent videos but my first tip to you is if you're not sure what any of this stuff does uh, just hover your mouse uh, over it for a second and you'll see a little yellow tooltip show up that uh, tells you what that menu option is called and what it does and what kind of inputs is looking for uh, and then if you still have um, you know uh, questions um, you want to hit that F1 button on your keyboard that's going to launch a little uh, quick help uh, bar over here. Uh, but I believe, let me see, there's also, I think if you hit this uh, question mark and you hit help, that's going to launch the full uh, instruction manual uh, that documents all of the different tools in the software. But uh, if, if you're more of a visual learner and you uh, don't care to read the whole manual, that's what these videos are for. Uh, so let's dive right in here, okay? Let's uh, look at the top left here, where we see the, uh, this is this is basically our file menu. Now, it says Autodesk 1, 2, 3D Design. I think it should say file, but that's their branding, so uh, we'll play along with it here. We have uh, the option to open up a new document, uh, to open an existing 1, 2, 3D X file, to save our project either to the Autodesk cloud um, or uh, to, to our uh, local computer. Uh, by the way, when you save a, a document, you are saving a file with the extension dot one two three d x now nothing else is going to understand what a dot one two three d x file does uh, only autodesk one two three d design can open one of those so if you're looking to 3d print you want to skip down over here to export as 3d uh, where you can export as an stl uh, i don't mess around with uh, these three file types over here a step can be very useful if you're importing into another cad program uh, and want to do some some additional edits in that um, and we'll talk a little bit about exporting to an SVG a little later uh, but usually what I'm doing is I'm importing uh, SVGs uh, as a sketch and uh, and bringing them into 3D rather than trying to create 2D things out of uh, 3D models but um, you know there's a good reason to learn how to do both a little further down here uh, we have the option to send our model to Mesh Mixer, which is another Autodesk software. It's very interesting. Uh, it's for uh, 3D sculpting as well as uh, checking your models before you send them to a 3D printer to make sure that they're uh, watertight and manifold and everything's kosher with your print. Um, and I definitely recommend getting into that. It's uh, it's a very interesting way to 3D model, which is completely different uh, from what we do in 123D Design. And then there's a uh, 123D Make, uh, which is also another interesting little uh, thing where you, you could take a 3D model and uh, blow it up and uh, slice it into layers and it will print out plans in case uh, if you want to let's say you want to make a giant t-rex skull and you have a bunch of cardboard laying around one two three d make can uh, print out uh, diagrams for cutting that cardboard into pieces and, and assembling it all together and it's got a bunch of other neat features and of course we have the exit uh, button over here we have our uh, undo and uh, redo keys up here and also control Z and control Y if you're used to keyboard shortcuts those will work uh, just the same way uh, and I guess you know, in order to show you all the rest of the tools we might as well have some models on the grid here uh, to, to show you how things change around when you start adjusting your view because that's going to be one of the most important uh, things to get a handle on as you first start 3D modeling is, is moving around in 3D space so um, first thing you want to do is you want to place some primitives and primitives are found under the primitives menu right here and uh, primitives are basically recipes for uh, kind of pre-made 3D models um, that uh, the software kind of gives you to start with. Of course, you're not limited to making objects with primitives, but they're an easy way to, uh, to plunk something down right off the bat. And the cool thing about primitives is that uh, you're not stuck with the initial block. You see the parameters down here. 
Uh, you can type in uh, alternate measurements if you want to keep that same basic kind of recipe, uh, but adjust it to, to suit your needs. Now, the cool thing about this uh, prism uh, primitive is that you can enter in a d different number of sides. I think it has to be a minimum of five, uh, but you can you know, enter six or seven or eight, make an octagon, oct octagonal prism. Uh, and put that down. Um, and uh, I'm just going to put down, uh, you know, just an assortment of primitives down here to uh, give me a little bit of uh, orientation when I start revolving the camera so you see how things are changing. All right, so let's talk about navigation controls. Let's talk about moving around in 3D. The first tool that you have available to you is the orbit tool, and you activate the orbit tool by holding down your right click button on your mouse and it works like this. I'm holding down the right click and I'm moving the mouse around and it's basically changing my camera angle orbiting around a central point. The other tool I have available is zoom. Now zoom is done by moving the mouse wheel up and down. So you scroll that wheel down and it zooms you out. You scroll that wheel up and it zooms you in. And then uh, if you click that middle mouse button you're gonna pan your view around. So using these three navigation tools I can pretty much get anywhere on the screen. I over orbit around and I can zoom out this way and if I want to look at things from the bottom I orbit around like that, place what I need using the pan tool uh, in the center of my view and then I can zoom in to see the, vo the bottom of this octagonal prism. So that's all you need to do is or orbit, pan, and zoom. Another tool you do have available to you is up, the, up here on the top right is this view cube. Now the view cube is really neat because even as you're orbiting, even if you're not using the view cube, it is still spinning, letting you know what angle you're looking at the workspace from. But you can also come here and just click it. And when you click it, it's going to spin you around to look at that viewpoint. And if you click on any of these flat sides like this, like straight on from the right, you're also going to get these arrows that let you do like a little barrel roll and then and, and spin your camera sideways. Um, we have the ability to uh, transfer to orthographic perspective to orthographic view instead of perspective view. Now we're looking at things from perspective view right now and what perspective view means is that even if we're looking at it straight on you see that cone is still smaller than the cylinder even though they are technically the same height uh, because of course in, a, in human perspective things that are further away are going to look smaller but if we switch over to orthographic view and we look at things straight on you see it doesn't matter how far back they are when we're looking at them straight on they are still going to reflect their real measurements now in fancier 3d modeling software you know you, you have these uh, split screen views where you can look at things from you know you'll have the view from the very top over here and the view from the right side over here and the left side over here um, and, and that can be very useful uh, but for one two three d design I think orthographic view uh, gives you pretty much everything you need the one other tool you have up in this view cube um, which is kind of neat is this little home tool which basically snaps your view back to a kind of familiar standard view from the front left uh, which uh, basically allows you to you know if the cat came by and, and knocked your mouse wheel so now you don't know where your your models are and, and you're lost or you know you just didn't have good mouse control you can hit this house it's basically your panic button and it's gonna swoop you right back to a view of the workspace alright so if you want to do anything to any of your uh, models, uh, you're going to have to select it. All these commands start with selection. So to select something, that's pretty easy. You just left click it. And if you want to get rid of it, uh, you can just hit delete on your keyboard and it will delete the model. Okay, let's say we didn't want to delete that. We have the undo key right up here, the redo key to undo our undos. If you want to select multiple objects, you have two options. You can start out here just clicking in no man's land and drag open a selection marquee. And everything it touches is going to be selected. You can see it's glowing in green. One uh, change in this new version is that uh, now selection marquees have to completely encompass the object in order to select them. So if I want to select this uh, cylinder, it's not enough for me to barely graze it like this. Now it works like most other softwares that you're used to where you have to encompass the object in order to select it. If you want to deselect something, you just give it a left click out here in no man's land and it will uh, deselect. Um, another way to select multiple objects is to click once and then hold down your control or shift key and click something else. 
shift click that and shift click that and now when you've got all of these selected they are going to move together and rotate together uh, and scale together and you know any other command to give it it's going to apply to all of them at the same time and by the way notice that when they move around they kind of orbit around one central point uh, that's kind of at the center of the whole assembly that you've selected there you can also drag objects basically really quickly move them around by just left clicking and holding and basically dragging them around like this you want to make sure that you don't linger on that uh, hold like this because then what's going to happen is you're going to get this um, dialog where you're trying to select one of the sub parts of the uh, solid. Uh, so that's what happens if, if you hold for too long before starting to drag. Uh, down here at the bottom, you have an option to change uh, your grid snapping. Uh, now this is a little weird because there's also a snap tool over here that is completely different from uh, what snap means here. And what's, what this snap means is that when you uh, start getting into moving the objects around, let's uh, let's focus on this cone right here let's say I want to start moving this thing and you notice as I'm sliding it it's going to three millimeters four millimeters five six seven it's wanting to stop at whole numbers because the snap is set to one now if I set that snap to five and I start moving it around it's gonna want to snap at five millimeter intervals five ten fifteen same thing if I use fractions you know switch it to half and it's going to want to start snapping at 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, and so on. Uh, so it depends on how persnickety you want to be with your snapping, or you can just turn it off entirely and let things roam around freely. Next to the snapping uh, dialog is the unit selection. Uh, you can see it's set to default in millimeters, and I know some of us Americans are probably balking at that because we have no idea what millimeters mean in real life. Uh, but here's the thing. When you send an STL to a 3D printer, 3D printers are going to be looking at your model and reading millimeters. Now, you can switch to, to design in inches if you want. Uh, but if you design something that is, uh, you know, 10 inches wide and 5 inches tall and, and, and 2 inches deep, um, wh when you print it on a 3D printer, if you're not careful, it's going to print something that's 5 millimeters uh, wide and, and, and 10, inch, uh, 10 millimeters tall. Because it only carries over the numbers. It doesn't carry the units. So if you want to design in inches, you can very well do that. But right before you hit export to 3D, uh, right before you export it to an STL, switch back to millimeters. It will automatically convert it for you, and then your uh, 3D printer will read the uh, correct units. Um, now, if you're also working with 3D printers, maybe you want to know how big your object is in comparison to the table size of your printer, and that's why you can use this edit grid over here. Uh, now, there are some presets here if you're using MakerBot, but uh, you can also just type in the uh, measurement of your, uh, of your 3D printer table right here. All right, now when you're working with, uh, with uh, solids, you're usually looking at three different components. Well, four, I guess. You're looking at, uh, first you're looking at the solid object as a whole, which you can reposition, you can rescale, you can move it around, you can combine it with other things. And then um, going into more detail, you can adjust its faces. Now, the faces are uh, things like, uh, let's say, this whole side over here which I can start adjusting as well so a solid is composed of faces and faces are comprised of edges which are these uh, line segments that border the face and some tools only apply to edges tools like fillet which will round this edge off like that and then you have lastly uh, the vertex which is just each individual point, uh, which you can also tweak around and move on its own. So you can either start by using tools that specifically target those subparts, or another strategy that I like to use is uh, to click on the object, move the mouse away from the object, and then move my mouse back onto the object, and you'll see that now different subparts uh, start being highlighted. So I can highlight just this side or just this edge. And when I highlight a subpart, another neat thing is this gear that comes up. And when you hover your mouse in the gear, 
it's basically going to filter out all these tools that are up here instead of having to navigate all those to find what you want. If you already know you're going to be working on this edge, you can just go in the gear and find only the tools uh, that... Uh, that apply to that specific subpart. So edges can be tweaked, they can be filleted, and they can be chamfered. I think that noise was my MakerBot finishing up over there. <laughs> um, all right, let's uh, start wrapping up this intro video here. Let's look at the right toolbar, just so you know what these things do. First three tools on the right here uh, are basically just replacements for uh, your mouse buttons. So we already know how to pan. That's just clicking the middle mouse button and moving the mouse around. But let's say you're working on a laptop or on a tablet, um, or you have, I don't know, for some reason, uh, you still have a mouse with only one button on it. I thought we'd phase those out. Uh, we just click on one of these, and it will temporarily transform our left mouse click into that function. So right now I am actually left clicking rather than holding down my middle mouse button and I'm managing to uh, pan around. And then after I click, that function goes away and left click goes back to functioning as it would normally. Then we have our orbit tool. Basically works as if I was right clicking, but I am now left clicking to do it. And uh, I can also reset the orbit point this way. And we have our zoom tool, which works as if I were scrolling up and down, but all I'm doing is dragging the left click up and down. So depending on how you like to work, those tools might be useful for you. This next tool called fit, it's pretty nifty. If you're zoomed way in on an object or you're zoomed way out over here, uh, fit is going to keep your camera angle, but zoom you in to a point where you are able to see all of your objects. Same thing if I'm zoomed in, it's going to fit and zoom me out until everything fits. Over here we have the option to display materials and outlines. Now materials are basically this blue skin that's covering everything. You can also recolor these by using the uh, the materials menu if you want, uh, which is right up here. Um, but uh, if you want those gone, or uh, you could hit uh, outlines only and just see the kind of skeletons of the edges that comprise these objects. Or you can hit materials only and hide those outlines. So it's up to you how you want to view things. I prefer to work with both of them on. Um, you have the ability to hide your solids or your meshes or show them. Uh, if you click on an object and you hit this eyeball, it's going to hide that individual one. Now you can't make things unhide individually. You have to unhide everything all at once with the show solids tool. Uh, and then once you start getting into sketches, you know, sometimes you want just the sketches out of the way and you can hide, uh, I think you can hide this individual one like that and then show sketches or hide all of the sketches with this tool here. You can also hide the work grid if you want to get that out of the way. Um, and uh, that's a pretty basic command there. I will wait on uh, revealing what group while snapping does a little later because it has nothing to do with the snap tool that we have already talked about. Uh, so that's your basic workspace. Don't forget that we also have access to the uh, Autodesk network of, of pre-made parts. Um, which is available with this little right toolbar over here. So if you click this, you're going to see we have some uh, little pre-made things that we can just drop in. So if you uh, don't want to take the time to design a gear on your own, you can probably just drag that in here. And uh, oh, there we are. Kind of works like a primitive, only uh, there's no real way to adjust it until we get it in here. Uh, but these can be very useful time savers. I won't go uh, into too much detail on these during the videos because I like to stay self-sufficient. Uh, but that's there for you if you like. So stick around for the next video where we'll be uh, talking about uh, things that we can do with whole solid objects, things like uh, moving them around, rotating them, scaling them, and then also checking out some of these new tools that Autodesk has added in here in this uh, new version, uh, Align and, and Smart Scale and the Ruler tool, which I think are all just very cool. So uh, I will see you soon.